I did a little bit of traveling this weekend to see some of my family members, which meant that I had to pack up all my projects that I wanted, potential projects to work on after I finished some. You know how it goes. I don't want to run out of any of the yarn, but I always overpack. Like, it never fails. Not too bad, though. Two totes. I had a couple of tiny bags within the bags, but I feel like that doesn't count. So maybe five or six projects that I worked on, and a bunch of them were the big chunky hats. This I actually found at a Joanna Fabrics on the way traveling. I just happened to see it. It was right next to a coffee shop. I was like, okay, let's go ahead and stop. Check it out. This is a color that I haven't used from this Forever Fleece tweed. It's called, what is it? Balsam Tweed. I actually enjoy it quite a bit. They only had two of them. What I really was looking for was this color because I've officially run out. I made one hat and I got started on a second one about seven or eight rows short. Again, I think we all just really enjoy it and we've been buying it out for all the projects. I'm thinking this will turn into a headband. I might have enough. This is 24. So if I fold it in half, that's not bad, right? Oh, that's pretty chunky still. <laughs> okay, maybe eight rows or eight stitches, why do I keep saying rows? Eight stitches up and then I need to do 32 rows around. I did start another project with the latte yarn or like the latte colored yarn. So this was a wishful thinking. I started using a knit stitch, which I really enjoy, but I think I'm gonna have to use a different yarn because this is gonna get very heavy very quickly. It did suggest using a nine millimeter crochet hook and I'm using an eight because I want it to be a nice thick type of fabric. You know what? I actually might finish this for myself. My goal was to work up a couple of quick mitten patterns as last minute gifts just to see if I could. I don't need any. Again, I was just in the car so I was just playing around with things. The idea is to do one piece then fold it over, seam it together, leave a little area for the thumb, and then seam the top close, and that's it. Just very, very quick. We'll see if that happens. I'm not feeling super inspired by it at the moment, like I was last night, but I did test out a new little knit crochet tool that I've had around for a while. It looks like a total mess at the moment because it's been in different bags and thrown in the trunk and moved from car to car. I just wear it on my wrist like this, and that way I can walk around and chat with people. I don't have to be worried about either holding the yarn, put it in my pocket, or have a yarn bowl with me and carry it as I'm chit-chatting with people. It was actually really nice, especially since it's the 3D printed material. It's from Pink Sheep's Design. I was at a maker's market a couple of weeks ago and I found this Shining Inspire. I think it's probably meant for a keychain holder, maybe a lanyard, something like that. I knew I had it at home and they were going to go together perfectly. So I just did that, but the pattern looks, again, super quick and easy. It's big, chunky yarn that you use to essentially make this thing right here. This color is ridiculous. This is a yarn from Fangirl Fibers. Pre-orders were open, I think, at the beginning of October. It was the Haunted New York collection, and this is Amityville. I wanted to make something that I was going to wear all the time, so this is going to be a ribbed beanie. Knew that I was going to love the color as soon as I started caking up. It was just gorgeous. And even though this takes quite a while because it's a four millimeter crochet hook, single crochet in the back loop only for the entire project, it's totally worth it. I kept going back and forth as I got about mm, 20 rows in and realized how long it was going to take. I had to reassure myself this is the right direction because I'm going to wear this so much. A little extra time and love and care put into this project is going to be totally worth it. This is a yes for me. I just wanted to see if it was something that I was even going to use. Like I liked the concept of it. Most of the time I'm in my yarn dungeon anyways and I have a bunch of yarn bowls. Like even in the car it was nice because I could just sit this in the cup holder and then continue to work with it. It all stayed all put together as nice as possible. I mean when I'm traveling the yarn is gonna get a little bit messy here. The cup holder was a nice feature. It kind of like popped down into it, just spun on the top. 
I don't know if it's supposed to be a feature of it, but it worked for me. And I had another trial run was this Furls Crochet Clutch. They came out with it a while ago and I've already tested it in the Yarn Dungeon and traveling, but it was like 30, maybe 40 minutes. So this was a lot longer. And just to kind of see how it was gonna hold up, I liked the fact that I could have a tiny project in it too. So my Muse 2320, it's not in there right now because I finished one of the graphs, so that one was just like finished and done, but I had this thin yarn chilling in here, and then all the hooks that I needed for my projects or potential projects that I thought it was gonna do, just like safely in here. So the other one is just a clutch that pulls out and has just the hooks, which I'm not gonna stop using that, but I like this addition and the fact that it has the wristlet too, way easier to travel with. There is this tiny, little area for I thought I was gonna put my notions in it but I ended up using it as my scrap yarn so whatever project I was working on when I needed to cut a piece off to weave in the ends and stuff I could just throw it in here because before I had just I hadn't even really ever thought about a specific area for it so I just throw it in the tote and then it just became messy and cluttered and things would be stuck to it or mainly me. I just had a bunch of bits of fiber all over myself. I can't say that it's going to replace my totes because it's not going to be like, it's just meant for one small type of project with the fingering weight yarn that worked the best. The reason I'm thinking about getting another one of these is because I liked this being one project, like everything for said project is in here, where before I thought it was gonna be kind of a catch all, here's my eight crochet hooks, here's the notions that I need for all of my projects, and then here's the tote bag that has all the yarn and things like that. But it was really nice just having clean cut, here's a project, put that in the tote, here's the yarn and everything that goes with it. I will say anything that's a little bit more than like fingering weight yarn to about worsted weight, so a number four medium weight yarn, if the project got too big, it did get caught on my hooks in here for the Fangirl Fibers Crete Mist. I had that in here initially, but that's a huge wrap that I'm working on. So it got caught on it, but I just spun the hooks around, made sure that they are facing this direction in here and not forward so they wouldn't grab the yarn. Oh yeah, and then I did get one more hank of yarn of the Amneville. So I got the DK weight yarn to make the beanie and wishful thinking the fingering weight yarn to make some socks. These are still gonna happen. They really are. I just thought, Maybe because of the color, I would get excited and want to start up some crochet socks this weekend. There's just a lot of things going on too. A hat where I don't have to really even pay attention. I just know the entire row is exactly the same. I can just kind of go through the motions with it. That's probably why I chose that instead of this where I'd have to go crochet in the round and remember the rows and sometimes they change and things like that. But maybe after Hexmas. I didn't want to miss out. I knew eventually I would want a pair of these Amityville socks. This Crepe Mist project is bringing me so much joy. Not only because I know that I get to carve out some time for myself in the morning and have some coffee, listen to my podcast or audiobooks, whichever one. This weekend though, I got to have a little chat with my family, have some coffee and listen to some music. So normally it takes about 45 minutes for each one of these. Saturdays and Sundays took a little bit longer because I got talking. It's gonna make this project that much more special to me though because every single day so far, I remember what I was doing, what I was listening to. So here is Saturday and Sundays was really hoping we were gonna see some blue. Definitely a wintry type of color. And there's a little bit of teal in that one too. My plans were to weave in the ends as I go with this project. I haven't been keeping up with that. So today is the day. I'm gonna put everything, cut all the ends off. I think most of them are actually woven in. I just didn't have a pair of scissors with me at that moment. Saturday to Sunday, apparently I didn't know where my scissors were at. So we have today, which is the 18th to add on to this wrap. It never fails, there's always at least one color from these projects that I want an entire cardigan made out of, and I think this is it. Yeah, I know this is it. I would love a super cozy, warm, maybe like a cable sweater. Oh, I would love that.
I will keep you up to date on the Amneville hat. Hopefully, I have a little more progress to show you tomorrow because tonight for my Hexmas movie, I haven't figured out what I'm going to work on. I was going to do the mittens with the knit stitch, but I'm not really feeling that. About 90 minutes, so I should make a little bit of a dent in it. Definitely won't finish it all, but that is okay. It's just gonna be a when I get it done, it's done type of project. Right now though, I'm gonna let you go. So thanks for hanging out with me today and I will see you girls tomorrow.